Welcome to Virtual Pathfinder YouTube channel. This video is about imaging the Blue Snowball Nebula NGC 7662. The first step is to locate the nebula in the sky using a Stellarium app. In this case I use an iPad app called Sky Safari Pro. I type in the name of the object to make a search for it. An information page about the object comes up and it's possible to click on an icon to display the object at the center of the screen on a star map. split the screen to show the Stellarium star map next to my image of the Blue Snowball Nebula. There is a slight difference in size and angle of rotation, but it can easily be identified. When the approximate location is determined, it is possible to navigate to it from star to star from brighter objects. This is often possible when the focal length of the telescope is not too long. My 72mm refractor has 420mm focal length, which is relatively short, which means a bit wide field of view and bright images. Apart from using the refractor sky Skywatcher EvoStar 72 ED, I used Vixen Polaris Star Tracker on a stable photo tripod. Before I show the resulting images of the Blue Snowball Nebula, I want to say a few words about traveling with astrophotography equipment. It is easy to get into a constant urge to buy bigger and bigger telescopes with wide apertures, which for sure can gather lots of light. I know the feeling, I've been there, but recently I have changed focus to lightweight equipment. That means inevitably a limit on the aperture of the telescope, especially in the case of refractors. Why lightweight, some may ask? Well, there are several reasons. For instance, the ease of use. A small telescope will be used very frequently since it's easy to set up compared to large and heavy equipment. A heavy telescope requires a heavy astronomical mount for stability and the total weight increases fast. Although the bigger telescopes may produce better image quality, it is a game of diminishing returns. You have to pay more and more in order to get smaller and smaller improvements. Another advantage with small equipment is that it takes almost no space to store when it's not used. That needs to be considered if you live at a place that has few clear nights per year. The gear will be standing collecting dust much of the time. Finally, there is a huge advantage with small equipment which is mobility, especially when it's small enough to be cabin luggage. That makes it possible to go to places with dark skies and also high up in the mountains. When transporting the equipment, lightweight is of course an advantage. A sad fact about expensive advanced equipment is that it's often used a lot less frequently than small compact rigs. But don't get me wrong, even a small rig weighs quite a lot compared to ordinary photography equipment. A 72mm refractor is a relatively small telescope. Still, I'm thinking about getting a 60mm telescope. It is amazing what a small refractor can do. So why am I talking about this now? A couple of weeks ago I was thinking about going up to the mountains and to bring a lightweight rig for astrophotography. I was looking for cheap airline tickets to the Alps of the Pyrenees. I discovered that the best prices nowadays does not include checked in luggage. But more surprisingly, the cheapest tickets don't even include normal cabin luggage. The only thing included in those cheap tickets was a bag that can be stored under the seat in front. For instance, the cheapest tickets on Ryanair allows a minimalistic bag with maximum dimensions 40 times 25 times 20 centimeters. That is very small, but I think I can get my 72 mm telescope along with photo equipment and a star tracker in a photo backpack of that size. However, when it comes to the tripod and the counterweight bar, I need a slightly larger bag. Ryanair offers an upgrade one level over the cheapest tickets, which allows one additional cabin luggage bag with maximum dimensions 55 times 40 times 20 
20 centimeters, which is the normal size of cabin luggage to be stored in the overhead compartment. My stable tripod is 63 centimeters long. It should precisely fit diagonally in a bag with that dimensions. If that doesn't work, I can in worst case use a slightly less stable lightweight tripod, which is smaller. The counterweight bar is about 50 centimeters long, which fits into that bag. Apart from the tripod and the counterweight bar, the cabin luggage is of course necessary for packing clothes and other personal items. The weight of each of the two cabin luggage bags must be under 10 kilos. From a preliminary estimation, I think my rig weighs less than 10 kilos and it will also be divided into two bags, so it should be within the limits. If this is possible, the equipment should be easy to carry around and to transport to wherever one wants it to be. In a later video, I will try to pack the equipment in a backpack and a bag to see if this really is possible. That means that the complete astrophotography rig can be transported as cabin luggage. There is a lot to gain with compact travel equipment when it comes to convenience and budget. I will get back to this in another video. Here are the resulting images of the Blue Snowball Nebula. This image is a single frame and as usual a better result can be achieved by stacking several images to average out noise. Still this image is relatively good considering it's almost cropped down to pixel level since the Snowball Nebula is quite small. Some facts about the Blue Snowball Nebula. NGC 7662 is a planetary nebula located in the northern constellation Andromeda. It has an apparent magnitude of 8.3. The size is 32 times 28 arc seconds. It is about 5700 light years away. That was all for now. I hope you got some useful information or inspiration from this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel. I will make more videos about how to do astrophotography more affordable and more travel friendly. Until then, have a nice day and many starry nights.